Hi developer and friends, I'm Stefan Bertos. Welcome to the Force Developer channel. Today's video will be about logging HTTP requests and responses in proper and elegant way. All the links will be in the description of this video. There are, of course, endless alternatives how to do the logging of the request properly, but I think this is the best one which I found so far. I'm speaking about the library called Logbook and let's open the official page. On the official page you can see basically that it has a version from end of 2021, which is not that bad, and a lot of documentation and a lot of <coughs> submodules. More or less uh, it is supporting all of uh, the various clients which you can use but I was mostly um, interested into the Spring Boot and speciality of the Spring Boot by using their starter which will auto configure almost everything for you so basically if you use their starter logbook Spring Boot starter then you can be sure that everything will be auto configured the only thing which you usually would pass is the configuration in the YAML all property file, which looks like that. But I will show this in my example. And this is really handy. You can choose um, the form of the log, um, I mean the format style like HTTP, JSON and so on. Then when do you want to log, if you want to log uh, uh, headers, authentications and stuff like this which is very handy if you want to fine-tune the logging. So, let's show some code. So I created a very, very simple application, which is a Spring Boot application using uh, Gradle and some common starter dependency for the web, then Spring Doc for um, for the Open API, some Lombok and obviously the logbook starter which we need for the logging except of this one dependency what you need to do is to craft your configuration so either follow the guard or or do something like that and the most important thing is to set the logging level for this library to trace otherwise it will be not locked and then you obviously can configure whatever you else whatever you want so most probably you would configure the endpoint for which you want to include or exclude the logging. Either you want to enable the secure filter, you want to lock or not lock the all the headers and so on and so on. So there is a lot of configuration. You can see this in their documentation. But this one which I have simply works. Yeah, I tested this. And my application is very simple. Spring Boot up, no magic here. It is using, uh, it is having some sample controller, which we will lock the entry in the submit, which has a simple request body sample object, which has couple of properties, and the service is doing just again some logging. So we see what is going on. This is uh, Spring Boot and Gradle so we can start this up very easily by using the Gradle wrapper and boot run command So now it started, port 8888. After opening the Swagger interface, we will see that really there is one, just one sample controller, which has a post endpoint. And if you would like to try it out, very simple request body and execute this, this would call our REST API. But what is interesting is the lock, because obviously that's the only thing which we are interested into in this um, video. And as said, the log level is trace and it's basically a really storing 
or <laughs> printing out in the in the log into the console all the details which are related to the request. That's the request part, including including as well the body. Here is the body. So all the headers which are in the request. Then we have uh, our log, which is inside the method, and that is in the service we are using the Lombok and basically uh, logging into the info what we received. So you see that this is same as this for the body and it is also logging the output or result which is also handy in sometimes so i'm using this uh, heavily in my application especially in the soap request and responses and it's very handy as well in the rest api calls it is sometimes handy to turn this on to see some edge cases which were not catched by your error uh, handling or logging so that's the library which I recommend and use it wisely on your project. Don't lock everything, but please apply some filtering, lock only the endpoints which you need and so on. And as you see, it is on the trace, so on production, most probably you will have this switch off. So, and I think that's all guys. Yeah, that's the only thing which I wanted to show you that you can use <coughs> this library um, it's very handy, very, very simple, just defining the dependency and then some configuration and that's it. It will lock whatever you configure in a very easy and manageable way. So thanks for watching and next videos are coming. Bye.